Greetings in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Amy McCreeth. I serve as the Dean at the Cathedral Church of St. Paul in Boston. I'm here today with Bishop Alan Gates and with some others to celebrate the greatest feast of the Christian year with you and with many other people across our diocese and around the world. We gather at a very diff difficult time in the life of the world. We wake up this Easter morning holding some grief at not being able to be present in places that we love and with people that we love. Some of us who are here today are grieving the deaths of loved ones. And all of us are mourning the disruption and the suffering in our communities and in our lives. But we follow a God who showed us through his incarnation, his life, his death, and his resurrection, that pain and death do not have the final word. A God who invites us to take courage even while we walk through a dark valley. It is because our hearts are holding so much that the promises of Easter mean even more this year. Our happiness may be tempered, but our joy is complete. This year, more than ever, even at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia. And so I invite you to worship with us, beginning with the great hymn, Christ is Alive. We will sing the first three stanzas together. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.
May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your ever life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love, therefore I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
reading from Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead to you, to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they, came, and they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you.
in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. <clears throat> in these days of <clears throat> sheltering in place and working at home, a recent Twitter post recounted the following tale. My five-year-old stormed out of my home office when I told him I had to do a meeting. He was very mad that I couldn't look at his crafts like I did yesterday. I tried to explain that it was Monday and I had to work. And he yelled, Monday isn't real, on the way out. I'm still just sitting here. Monday isn't real. How I sympathize with that little boy. A lot of things don't seem real right now. In fact, there's some part of me which, despite our best efforts, flowers and hymns and joyful acclamations, there's some part of me that feels like yelling right along with that anxious and disappointed little guy. Easter isn't real. At least, this year it doesn't feel altogether real. Good Friday. Now, Good Friday is real enough. A virus convulsing the world, deaths already surpassing a million, victims dying alone, quarantined from their loved ones, economic freefall, nest eggs devastated, jobs lost, income lost, family security lost. It's the Holy Week story all over again. Crowd mentality surfacing, scapegoats suffering, leadership faltering. Anxiously, we huddle behind closed doors shouting, perhaps, with that little guy, Easter isn't real. <clears throat> I have confessed in some prior reflection that I do not like roller coasters. I don't like hanging upside down. I don't like it when the track plunges so fast that organs which belong in my chest cavity are somewhere in my throat instead. I know that the padded bar which holds me snugly at the waist is supposed to enable me to wave my hands above my head with glee, but I just clutch the thing with the proverbial white knuckles. I do not like it because I am not in control. And it turns out that that uncontrollable amusement ride, which I successfully avoid, is an apt metaphor for the uncontrollable nature of life, which I cannot avoid at all. We look around and we cannot avoid this truth, that despite our best efforts and sometimes our successful illusions to the contrary, we are utterly, completely, wholly dependent upon the grace of God. This time we shout with that little guy, control isn't real. Whenever I confront this reality, that my notions of control are an illusion, I return to Philip Simmons. Philip Simmons was a professor of English at Lake Forest College. In 1993, he learned that he had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. He died in 2002 by which time I was serving at a parish just down the road. In those intervening years, he wrote a book called Learning to Fall 
the blessings of an imperfect life. It's become a foundational text in my life. Let me read you a little bit. <clears throat> Who among us gets to dictate the terms of his or her good fortune? Our greatest blessings, along with our greatest burdens, seem to fall upon us unbidden. The example of Jesus like the experience of mud season in New England, reminds me of a harsher truth. To be reborn, we must first die. Dying, like mud, can take many forms, but every death, in the sense I mean, is a letting go. We let go of ambition, of pride, of ego, we let go of relationships, of good health, of loved ones who go before us to their own deaths. We let go of insisting that the world should be a certain way. Letting go of any of these things can seem the failure of every design. But in letting them go, we may also let go fear let go our white-knuckled grip on a life that never seems to meet our expectations. Let go our anguished hold on smaller selves our spirits have outgrown. We may feel at times that we have to let go of life itself, only to find ourselves in a new one, freer, roomier, more joyful than we could have imagined." End quote. In his life and in his death, Philip Simmons suggested that falling with grace is the necessary prelude to rising by grace. <clears throat> so if you and I are feeling these days as though we are in free fall, and I expect that much of the time lately we feel exactly thus. If we are feeling these days as though we are in free fall, let us claim it as the suffering prelude to some new form of rising in grace. Every year the suggested scripture lessons for Easter roll around there are several options. For 33 years, I think, I have never before chosen the Jeremiah option that we heard this morning. Peter's grand testament to resurrection from the book of Acts always seemed so much better, so much more Easter. But this time, Jeremiah spoke to me. The, sp the prophet spoke volumes. You heard it. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. The Lord appeared to them from far away, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call, saying, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Not for the first time, and not for the last, an oracle speaks the word of God into a dark and troubled time. Not for the first time, and not for the last, a prophet of the Lord says to an anxious people, you will survive. You will build again. You will plant again. You will shake your tambourines again. You will dance again. Perhaps I never picked Jeremiah for Easter Day because I never so deeply yearned 
to hear this promise of restoration. And even while that restoration is yet a future promise, there was something else buried in Jeremiah's word. Did you hear it? The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. Grace in the wilderness. The ancient Hebrews found grace in the wilderness when they were led through the terror by a daytime pillar of cloud and a nighttime pillar of fire. God's people found grace in the wilderness when every morning they awoke to a freshly fallen layer of manna, food enough for that one day. Centuries later, those in Babylon, Babylonian exile found grace in the wilderness when they strengthened one another with song or when they heard the unexpected summons of King Cyrus. Wilderness experiences of grace have been real to the faithful in every age. And they are real, it turns out, to us. In these most troublous of times, we catch our own glimpses of grace in the wilderness. From this cathedral's manna ministry, to St. Stephen's in the South End, to Progente connections in Framingham and Marlborough, to parishes in Somerset, New Bedford, South Yarmouth, in every corner of our diocese, congregations are finding ways to provide food and support to the most vulnerable in their communities. And with the careful measures that express love for volunteers as well, they are living their own wilderness faith with compassion. This grace is real. Last Sunday morning, I received a message from Dean Amy McCreeth with a mix chord file. Six members of this cathedral scola singing remotely from one another, yet miraculously in perfect unison. A beautiful chant. Calm to the waves, calm to the wind, Jesus whispers, peace be still. It happened that the file arrived just moments after I had received word of the death of a faithful priest in our diocese, too young. In the wilderness of my sorrow, that chant was balm. This grace is real. In New Hampshire, at our diocesan camp, the Barbara C. Harris Center, the staff has been called upon by municipal emergency officials and by the nearby Monadnock Community Hospital to provide assistance. The camp gym has become a staging site for emergency food supplies, and the lodgings at our diocesan camp are now available to first responders and hospital workers who, having been exposed to the coronavirus, need a safe haven in which to remain apart from their families. Shelter in the pandemic wilderness. This grace is real. And every little glimpse of grace that you are seeing in the midst of these dark days, everyone grace in the wilderness. Dear friends, the resurrection discovered by those faithful women at the tomb and proclaimed to me and to you in that great gospel of this day, that resurrection is God's eternal answer to all the sorrows of Holy Week and to all that grieves us still. The Easter proclamation is this. Peter's failures were real, as are ours. But forgiveness, too, is real, and forgiveness will prevail. The women's despair was real, as is ours. But hope, too, is real, and hope will prevail. 
The disciples' fear was real, as is yours and mine, but love, too, is real, and love casts out fear, and love will prevail. Jesus' death on the cross was real, as is the death of so many in these painful days, as is the shadow of death all around us, all around our world, as will be our own death, yours and mine, but resurrection, too, is real, and new life will prevail. Monday isn't real, shouted the anxious and bewildered little guy, and we know just how he feels. But Good Friday is real, and Easter is real, and Monday, turns out, will be real. And grace is real, and hope is real, and love is real, and resurrected life is real. Such is the promise which we claim and proclaim this day. Hallelujah anyhow, as our dear departed Bishop Barbara would say to us this day, hallelujah anyhow. Easter blessings to you, dear friends. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in the Holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. I do. do you believe in God the Father? I, I believe in God, God Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God. Will you cherish the wondrous works of God and protect the beauty and integrity of all creation? I will, I will God. God. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by divine grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Rooted in the abundant life and love of Christ Jesus, we pray for the life of the church, the lives of people in need, and the life of all creation, saying, Hear us, God. 
hear us and help us. Holy God of resurrection, breathe new life into all of creation. Send sun to warm us and water to saturate yards, fields, and mountains. Set all things in order that abundance and healing may spring forth. Hear us, God. Hear Hear us and help us. Be with those who gather to worship you throughout the world today, that all may be renewed for your service. We pray for our bishops, Alan and Gail, that they may be strengthened and find joy in their ministry. We pray for the church in Jerusalem and the Middle East, and for all medical, sheltering, feeding, and disaster response ministries. Hear us, God. Hear us and help us. Open paths for cooperation between nations, to care for refugees, survivors of natural disaster, and people living through war and pandemic. Bless the efforts of peacemakers, diplomats, and relief organizations to foster peace and justice in the world. Hear us, God. Pour out your enduring mercy to strengthen those who persevere in difficult times, especially healthcare workers, first responders, all those who provide essential services in this challenging time, and all others whom we hold in our hearts today. Hear us, God. Hear us. Gather together the various gifts of this diocesan community and unite us in praise and hope. Harmonize the sound and movement of voices, hands, feet, and hearts, that we may build one another up and amplify the mission of this diocese. Hear us, God. Hear us, us. You have united yourself with the saints at rest through Jesus Christ, the firstborn of the dead. Join us all together in his resurrection on the last day. And we pray especially today in loving thanksgiving for Bishop Barbara Harris. Hear us, God. Hear us, us. Please add your own thanksgivings and prayers silently or aloud. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now we turn in our liturgy from God is revealed in scripture to God is revealed in the breaking of the bread. We will pray over bread and wine and ask the Holy Spirit to make it for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. For love's sake, in the midst of this pandemic, we will not consume the blessed bread and wine today. In solidarity with all of you and with millions of people around the world who cannot come to the altar today and holding in our hearts those in hospital and others suffering with the virus, we maintain a fast from the sacrament, even on this feast day. So today, in place of the words of of invitation, we will pray a special prayer 
of spiritual communion and then pause for reflection while the scola sings. And now, in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, we offer a sacrifice and an offering to God. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true paschal lamb, 
who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the feast. feast. Alleluia.
now in thanksgiving for the grace of this spiritual communion we have shared together, let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise forever and ever. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The Maker of heaven and earth, blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forward, forever. Now may our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the grace of the everlasting covenant, make you whole in every good work to do God's will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be upon you and upon those you love this Easter day and always. Amen. Amen.